What is good? We're back and we've got a little player value talk. So the rookie drafts have kind of come and went. They'll be all summer long, but we've, we've got a, a nice bit of data about kind of who goes where. Um, and specifically in this show, we want to zoom in on kind of that 1-9 through 1-12-ish pocket um, and talk about those wide receivers that are kind of in that area and, and then the running backs that are in that area as well. And we're going to what we're going to do is then put them up against uh, veteran players through our eight, our startup ADP to kind of give you an idea of what those players kind of value is on the average here, which I think is pretty important. So, you know, obviously the one nine through one twelve could be, you know, a lot of different variations, but it's usually the same guys depending on who you like and, and who's in that room with you. So at this point, I feel like it's a, it's it's a pretty easy like, hey, we kind of know what it is, so we can kind of go right over to these guys' personal preference we might have through here. But in this pocket here, I think this is a really important part of the draft here where sure. you can decide to go kind of one way or the other. You can get good veteran value here, or you could really lock in on a rookie that you feel really, really good about. So Yeah, definitely. I, I like how you're describing it. Like it's, a pocket is a, is a good way to describe it. Uh, you know, you, like you, you got the... Um, you got the top seven and then the key uh, draft pick in one eight that kind of catches whoever drops out. If you throw in J.J. McCarthy up there, you, you got the guys falling. And then once you get past that, that one nine just kind of starts the draft really. Um, it's a good good area there. And then, um, you know, like you said, you can either take your guy in that area somewhere um, or let someone else decide they have a guy. Right. Yeah, I mean, and, and we're talking super flex tight end premium as per usual. When we're talking about uh, our ADP and rookie ADP, that's that's the standard that we're going with. 1.5 is the premium. Um, so the one quarterback stuff, you're kind of like, I got a lot of problems with you people. I don't really have any problems with it. You just remove the quarterbacks and move them into the second round if we're talking rookie picks, basically. Sure, well, we're talking super flex tonight, so we're going <laughs> to right. get right back on track there. Yeah, Thanks we, for the left turn, Jay. We, we, t- we talk... Super flex tight end premium uh, in these settings a lot of the times is the standard operating procedure around here. Like the, a one QB with a circle and a line through it. It's the, it's the SOP around here. So like you said, Brock Bowers is usually the one, it's JJ or, or Brock. And then the, I don't really want to talk about those guys. That, that That's also a valuable part of the draft because you can certainly move around. But Obviously. a lot of people are a lot more confident in picking and sticking there. It's hard to get a lot harder to get those people off there. Sure. Um, in a lot of instances, but I, I've found that there's definitely some some good movement um, oh. through, you know, one nine through no one. Doubt. I just traded back from the one nine today to the one twelve to bump up a, a, a second round pick I had. I I think I moved two eleven up to two four. Um, so definitely just did that today in a, in a in a dynasty league. Enjoyed that process. Good trade. I had some more thirds and fourths involved in that in that deal, but uh, I think. End of May here. So we've got enough rookie drafts going on. Almost everybody that you're dealing with at this point says, well, in another draft, this happened. They've and got one or two under know, their belt at this somebody's point. It's got not all of them. Most people have a rookie draft under their belt. Maybe a couple of, you know, the real degenerates have three or four already. So, you know, like we do. Four, so Three or four hundred. Right. <laughs> so, well, in this draft, this person went, you know, you got a little something to call on. You got our, we have ADP right here in front of us from all our mocks and everything. It is, it is a good area here to say, where am I going with this? Am I trading back? Am I at 12? Do I need to trade up to 10 to get this guy? Or like you yeah. said, put, take these values, take these players, take these commodities and, and look and see if you want to turn it into somebody that you, you know is good at football, a pro, right. or you want to keep this high upside potential. Right. There. So it's, you're removing the mystery from it a lot of the times, or are you going to take the, the value and, 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 you know, the potential you know skyrocket of value or at least insulation of some value especially for a lot of these guys because they were first round or high end second round absolutely um, picks in the actual nfl draft so people are like that we're going to remove Penix and bo Nix from a lot of this conversation tonight and so i've had xavier worthy brian thomas and lab mcconkey as as a, as a tier of their own up there you've had it for a, lot, for, a while for, 
pre-draft, post-draft. It just happened to work out that way. Pre-NFL draft, you had them bunched together. Had just happened to work out that that everything went the way it did, and we we didn't really have to make any changes, or I didn't have to make any changes. Uh, But you know, I think I think we've come to the point where Benson and and Brooks have have, are definitely starting to creep into that tier for me in a lot of this, and and maybe maybe I got to expand that tier a little bit. Really, what I want to break break this down to is in our startup ADP. Xavier Worthy is is right around you know the guys like T Higgins and Jordan Addison and Josh Jacobs and JSN uh, and R- Rashi Rice, which is on the decline, and I would might even go a little further down. Um, and then Lad McConkey comes in, so all these guys are kind of in the same place. They're a little more jumbled up than than what your rookie draft ADP kind of is. They're they're you know one or two off. But where do we stand on? making the 1-9 through 1-10 through 1-11 12 picks or are are any or all of these rookies I mean we could pretty much or our veterans rather we could pretty much start with T Higgins I would probably take T Higgins over any one of those three wide receivers being Brian Thomas Worthy and Ladd right I wouldn't no no I we know T Higgins. And that's exactly. I mean, this is exactly why we're having the conversation. We know T Higgins is a good NFL wide receiver. You know, he's quote unquote only twenty five. Uh, if he was twenty six already, man, this dude would be walking with a cane, right? Yeah. But he's 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 only twenty five. Very rarely, when when it, the conversation comes up and says, "Well, he's about to change teams," is that really a bad thing? So I, I, like, some well, we don't. You know, he's got another year on his contract and this and that. T's going to leave Burrow most likely. The, the Bengals just don't write checks like that and they got they've written one to burrow they're gonna write they gotta write one to chase they don't have a choice so they don't just they, they don't just write checks um so t's leaving um uh, and i just feel like he could go somewhere and crush what there was all off season it was like what happens if he if higgins w- ends up with the chiefs and he certainly still could but worthy ended up there you mm-hmm. know last year maybe halfway through the season I had a, a late first round pick. I put it up in the discussion in the group chat of the of a, of a league. Um, I had won the championship a couple of years in a row, so it's like this is a the let, late first. And I said, "Who's the best player I can get with this with this pick?" I even talked called you when I got the offer. I said, "Hey, everybody in the league, who's the best player I can get for this pick mm-hmm. um, for my first round pick?" With obviously everybody knows it's going to be late ish. T Higgins was the best player I got. I didn't pull the trigger. Mm-hmm. Could have. Obviously, he went. He gets a little banged up. Joe Burrow, you know, his hand falls off, so kind of f- fell apart before I could make the trade. But then, you know, fast forward a couple months, and here we are. My one twelve is Lad McConkey. We're in that same area. Um, it's the same value ish, you know, area. So I, to me, I would probably. I, I think I can probably get away with taking T Higgins over Brian Thomas. Um, I think I want Lad, and I think I want Xavier Worthy over, over T. Higgins right now. Hey guys, a quick reminder to head over to patreon.com slash the FF Dynasty to sign up for a free membership to get access to the free Discord channel. Or hit your boys with the $5 holler and get access to extra shows, mock drafts, roster reviews, and also our 2024 Rookie Draft Kit, complete with rookie rankings, ADP, and player pages. All for your pleasure. Yeah, for me, I think I've I've started to go a lot of the opposite way with rookies. If I can get a really good veteran, now that there's certainly times, and then it all comes down to, as always, we're, if, if you're talking to a vacuum, it's one thing. That's not really how things work. Um, sure. On a lot of teams, unless I'm on a complete rebuild, if, I, if I'm a year or two away, I sh- I'm taking all these picks because uh, I'll trade them for something else or trade them for future picks or keep them and, and roll. But like... Any team that I think I'm anywhere near competing, I, I, I think I've gone a, a 180 on a lot of like the upper echelon picks. Maybe I make them a little bit more the, the true, true blue chip. So once we get down into these other guys, which I love, like I said, I've had Xavier Worthy, Ladd McConkey and Brian Thomas right here uh, that whole time. So I, I've liked these guys. I just I know T Higgins has X wide receiver number one talent in there and I've seen it. Go Tigers. And I just those other guys is just a mystery to me so i could mitigate some risk he's i mean he's if he was a running back and it was this age then it's a no-brainer and you're going into 25 26 and sure. you're like all right we got to lose some value but i mean t higgins value is probably going to hold pretty strong for another two three years here um and i, I just if he plays this year well, he's probably going to play this year with the Bengals, and he's going to probably be 
pretty damn good. And then there's a chance he probably goes somewhere else who who really needs you know a and number somebody's one. Somebody's gonna be paying him to be there. No, I be, get it. Be their I number mean, one. So I, in, in that situation, T. Higgins to me seems like that's that's a that's a must swap for for any of those guys. But you know that's what makes this kind of go go around is that. Um, you know, you're you're saying you'd rather take uh, the guys basically in better and good situations that are younger. Well, I don't I don't disagree with that theory there, and uh, and 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 that's a newer development for me because as, no, I, as I've been playing, I I value the rookie picks, I want them, but then I kind of just I want the known rather sure. than the the unknown a lot of time. And and are you are you going to smash home runs every time with that? No, sure, but you can you can get really good upside that's known already, and 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 just be like, all right, I came out of here, I know I got a starter for three, four, five years. No, I like that. Deal. I like that a lot. I I just. The the T Higgins part of it to me for so he's very he's yeah very up and down some some inconsistencies there. If he would have laid it down last year like he was sure. laying it down the year before, this wouldn't even be possible. This guy, and that's kind of why I want because to he get was a T third Higgins round. because I I've seen it and this wouldn't be a possibility if it was as good as totally it has understand. been. Right? Hey, T Higgins was a third round startup last year. Exactly right. You're exactly right. We've seen it. We know he can do it. There's some some big inconsistencies there and he's not going to be consistent with a backup quarterback you know jake browning comes in and and that's it was all we could do to get our jamar chase to be you know yeah, whatever that late late season game was i don't know if it was the playoffs or a game before the playoffs but t higgins was fucking all the way back and was just yeah, he was, sla- dominating. was slaughtering if he, he didn't dominating. have that game he would be even cheaper i feel yeah, like that kind of reminded people possibly. of what he could do because yeah. he had an incredible catch and turnaround for it yeah. like you're, the, you're, his problem is the is is, is is he gets banged up it's not like even the quarterback is not really a problem like if he's healthy and can stay the whole game yeah done deal He's good. He's a good player. He's a good player. So you, there's some. You're taking a little risk out of it by going and, and side swiping there to, to Higgins, but also the submit some banged upness there in his profile, and he's already 25. Versus you know Lab McConkey. He's Lab McConkey's not an X. He's not going to sit out there and, and break down on the sidelines one on one all game long either. But and he has had some injuries. Some injuries, and he's coming in young. I. There's that no exa- bad the, the Xavier age. Worthy. He might as well have like just this little background lighting behind his name. Yeah. You know, he went to the Chiefs. They traded up to get him, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, yeah. You know, I I, mean, you know Xavier Worthy. He's just got this like, obviously the four two combine. He's got this ridiculous uh, red zone route running situation going on as it coming out. I, he just he could be so good, and he goes to Andy Reid. You know what I mean? So he goes to Patrick Mahomes, Andy Reid. Do I think T Higgins is going to outscore Xavier Worthy this year? Yes. Mm-hmm. Is is it Worthy going to have some really nice games here or there? A couple, probably have a nice highlight reel, but be very inconsist, inc- inconsistent as a rookie going to the Chiefs, who obviously just brought in Hollywood Brown, who's going to teach, hopefully teach Worthy how to do worthy things. Yeah, you know? yeah, that's it. That's it. You know, what, he's got one year with Hollywood. I don't know if they'll retain him, but, you know, they, that it, they are, uh, you know, I'm not saying they're the Spider-Man meme exactly, but they're close enough. Yeah, and dude. I like both of them to bring the vertical game back. If I had to pick one of these players to help my team win a championship this year, it's T. Higgins. I get it. You're absolutely right. I I think you can trade. I I I'm, think I was worthy in Hollywood. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But, Just wanted to clear that yeah. up if it wasn't. But that, that you know, my thing is is the uh, I think the value on worthy it, the, the, the sitting right here and it, interestingly enough in our ADP at six one six two in a startup right mm-hmm. in a startup dynasty back to back I just feel like if you put them side by side I guess if you I guess you just got to tell some one person he's a contender and then they would really have to make a decision like you said a high end contender actually like there's no doubt about it your team's going to the playoffs and you're just trying to flip that coin that for those two weeks to you know progress through the playoffs and play for the championship i just to me yeah. it just feels like there's a stink on higgins and you're right there is because he was third round startup last year so I, I like what you're saying there i just feel like the value is and and that's there i i like how you're trying to be fluid with it and and obviously you know if you open your eyes and be open to picks. some less yeah, sneak, uh, be, be open <laughs> to the fact hey let's let me go win instead of just stacking my team full of youth i get that too yeah. Just, you know. I've, I've, I've seen I've just you know been around long enough and just seen some really good teams do this a lot and and you keep some rookie picks and you keep some guys that you really like I don't want I like Lad a lot he's just have a soft spot and I like Worthy a lot I just you know I like it, you it's a it's a good way to just keep keep restocking the the draft pile of players that I know are going to be good instead of you know maybes but all right let's keep it moving let's let's go uh, Jordan Addison does Jordan Addison move the needle for you for for Xavier Worthy or or Ladd or Brian Thomas 
Brian Thomas was the only maybe with T Higgins, right? Right. Yeah. I mean, I have, I would, I would have no problem just saying, yeah, Jordan Addison's on my team I, instead of worthy or yeah. Lad. So if okay. Jordan Addison's in the rookie draft again this year, I feel like I could click his team, his name a lot quicker than Higgins. Um, he's just, he's, Okay. Uh, he's younger so, yeah, sure and he just crushed yeah you know again this is some some shade coming out on jordan addison because he's got bad uh check marks on some you know well jordan y- jordan addison just first went, down per reception yards per route run yada yada i saw deep bro and scott barrett bro and over. he just went 70 for 900 yards and 10 t- nine touchdowns 10 touchdowns yeah. so anybody else not named jordan addison for some reason it's just that's the best rookie you know it's a Listen, great rookie season if you score too many touchdowns yeah you're not any good because yeah. you can never do that again and he that still was still went 70 for 900 touchdowns. you can either say you can look at it and you can say hey well you know justin jefferson got hurt so he got funneled to targets how many wide There's receivers how many wide receivers should be catching balls and they're not how many wide receiver rookie wide receivers can't get open to get those targets funneled their way if and you then took Kirk away Cousin all the big plays hurt, hit. yeah and then Kirk cousin gets hurt and now Josh Dobbs is out there throwing the rock around, right. and you know, my man gets open who, who deep. Else was the, um, somebody else, the dude. That, uh, what was his name? The, the, the say former Nate, backup, Nick Mullins. The, Nick Mullins. And Nick Mullins. Nick Mullins out there throwing the rock there. around. Gerard Hall for Hall took us half, and he got benched. <laughs> he got that didn't hurt. last he got a concussion, long. I think. Oh, he did, but then he come back, didn't he? Um, so it was a uh, it was a cast of characters for quarterback for Jordan Addison last year in his rookie year, and he goes seventy for nine hundred and something and nine touchdowns. And we're upset about it. I'm not. I, I, I love I, I, I'm not either. The you know we we the, the only I, the only shade I can throw is that you're coming into a rookie quarterback. You're, this you're year? coming into a, a obviously unknown situation of who who's getting you the ball. Can can Sam Darnold do it? And then on the you know whenever they make that switch, where all season is is JJ McCarthy capable of of facilitating three or four guys TBD? But I, I do like Addison. I think I would probably go with the rookies over Addison there. Tank Dell and Zay Flowers, you're taking them over both any all those rookies. Tank for sure. Oh, shade on Zay, huh? Hmm. Well, again, you know, hey, I don't know. But look at how Zay closed that year out. Close look it what's out. about to happen. I don't, I don't doubt Zay's about to be get a, a twenty point receiver right there, baby. No way. That dude's a dirt. that's what he did at yeah. the end of the year. He was on fire. Fluke. He was <laughs> fluke. That dude's so dirty, and he's he's a broken play waiting to happen. And this is true. He's with a quarterback who can do some broken play stuff. Whew. He he's uh, so thirteen all right. targets, nine catches, seventy two yards a touch. And all the, all they did was they drafted Tez, and they lost Odell, and they should get Andrews back. You know? Yeah. So anyway, so so d- definitely Tank Dell. How about uh, George Pickens? Great question. George is the one where, to me, it seems if, if Brian he, Thomas automatically, I'll take George. I'll take George Pickens. That's what you want. If, if if you want Brian Thomas to be George Pickens, right? So I'll take that automatically. If you could tell me that we're going to get a year here where we don't scratch our heads and wonder about George Pickens being a head case, I'm taking Pickens over all these guys. Pickens is about to absolutely crush. If he can stay on the field and out of the doghouse with the coaches. So you trade one nine for Pickens? All day. Okay. Pickens is All about right. to slay. Okay. And All day. he's about to be, that's a Jay Wayne line right there. All er, day. Jay, Jay. Now, sometimes Jay Wayne says that in the wrong time. It's not really all day. It's like not really any time. Just not, in the morning. Not any time during the day. But in this situation, we got a big problem with the Steelers here. Mm-hmm. Russell Wilson doesn't like to throw the ball over the middle of the field. So that's the situation. And... But it doesn't hurt Pickens. Pickens gets deep. Pickens gets deep. But you put pick you put you put young athletic Pickens in Cortland Sutton role for for Russell Wilson now. Yeah. I'm all in. Yeah. I'm all in. Yeah. Now, if he throws his helmet too many times early in the season and something doesn't go his way and this and that, it's like, come on, man. Just everybody knows that you're you're the probably the most one of the most gifted players on the on the on the field. Just mm-hmm. keep it together for a second. Please, yeah. George. Please, George. Yeah, you, get, you remove Deontay. You bring Muth back. You got Roman Wilson as basically your two. So it, it should be should be heavy target share for for Pickens. And and you know, I think that can't separate stuff is is silly. He, he's he's a machine. He's so dirty. He's nobody, such a filthy player. Nobody's staying around with that guy. Yeah, I mean, I and just he, throw it to him. Doesn't matter. Just throw it to him. Doesn't That's all matter. you got to do. Um, so yeah, I I would I would tend to agree. I I I still lad and. Ladd and, uh, and Worthy are, are really close there for me. A definitely BT there. 
Um, how about JSN? Over who? Uh, 1-9, 110, 111. Now, see, all right, Lad McConkey, mm-hmm. nor, number one target earner on his offense almost immediately. JSN still has... Allegedly. <laughs> uh, who who they yeah. gonna throw the ball to? I mean, I mean it's it's, it's re- hardball, so it could be Palmer. Who knows? It, it could be Palmer, you know. but I mean, it's it's yeah, it's it's most likely Lad or Quentin Johnson has a nice little breakout here. But still, he's nobody not, likes but, that. So. No, and I have no problem with Quentin Johnson having a night. Nice, Quentin Johnson could have a nice little breakout. He's coming from way down where Nico Collins was last year. So good if Nico Collins and if Quentin Johnson can have a nice little breakout. But I think consistently, the targets. Of, I think the target leader on the team is going to be Lad. Mm-hmm. And so that's the problem versus like JSN where you st- Tyler Lockett coming back was terrible for JSN short term. Yeah. Consistent Gets the restructure. Targets. So clears up some. Yeah. And so, and then you got D, so you got three guys right there and a capable Noah Fant and, in, in there for those guys versus a lad McConkey. I just, I can't take JSN over lad McConkey. Um, I could pay, I could probably put JSN in the, in the Brian Thomas section there um i think see the problem that i got with brian thomas is he just looked amazing and he had but it's like that one Jaden daniels gets hot you know you got the unstoppable other wide receiver over there and who's making plays right. and then neighbors so, neighbors is over there just cooking yeah and Jaden Jaden daniels is Jaden daniels is a heisman trophy winner yeah. and so like and I, I know there's the, the cut ups and I know there's the just, you know, the fluid motion for a Brian Thomas, for a guy who can, you know, as big as he is. And the, the, I, I know there's yeah. that story, you know, hey, he didn't he hadn't really been playing wide receiver that long. He actually does have a little bit more agility than you would think for somebody being that big. So I, the the probably the, the high end, you know, ceiling outcome for Brian Thomas is really, really good. Yeah. Really, really, really there's good. no shade on Brian Thomas. No, but we but, but also that. You know, we've seen recently a couple times where you just got that that floor right there, just kind of yeah. you know you could just be a couple a couple seasons where you don't get that breakout that you're looking for. Yeah, and, and, and he he seems like to be the closest boomer bust because it doesn't seem like there's as much potential for volume. And now some people might argue he's he's their number one. I you could say whatever you want and, and line him up however you want. Christian Kirk is going to lead that team in receptions if he's healthy. No no doubt about it. I mean, I agree with that. And I said, and I don't and and say in like in a rookie draft when he, you're if you get stuck which, for the rookie to be boomer bust and to show the big I'm fine like that's yes. what's going to happen. I'm fine with that. I'm not saying that uh, just Lad and Worthy have opportunity to potentially have some you know Lad Worthy could be on a Rasheed Rice trajectory where a week eight he's picking up volume and doing crazy things and showing crazy athleticism where Brian Thomas will probably be all season kind of you don't know when to start him up and down yada 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 it seems like if if but if it clicks if worthy if worthy and lad get locked in then right. they're, they're, you're probably not taking him back out of your line you'll live with a couple of low games but it'll probably be fairly consistently okay um, yeah. with some big games so that I I, I for me th- this is a case of JSN was the number one receiver last year I'll take him over all those guys and I'll just wait uh, that's fine. I'm okay with that. I think we get a new system. I think we're we're. I, I'm just. I'm not that quick to move on and be like, ah, oh, this guy all of a sudden doesn't deserve. Like, all right, well, we it, the opportunity may not be there year one. I mean, Lockett could be gone this year. He could outproduce Lockett easily this year. They move him around a little bit. They they they're going to run a lot more eleven personnel. They're going to be a completely different offense. Brian Grubbs coming in and it's going to completely change the way they operate things. They're going to be throwing the ball a whole lot more. How's their offensive line? It's good. Okay, I mean that's a that's a sincere they, question. Two years ago, sure. they were playing two rookie tackles, I believe, and then both of them got hurt last year, and they were they just had injuries all over that line. The reason I the asked line's is, good, at, I'd, it's middle of the pack, which is fine as okay. long as it's not lower end of an offensive line. Uh, you know, we're we're okay with that, and they okay. they have they have opportunities to. That's a that's a sneaky. I just good here, team here's, right there. Here's my here's a here's a crystal ball potential situation here. Like you said, new system that you got. I mean, for what it's worth, I love pulling for Geno Smith. They're going to be now. running what lo- Washington love, Huskies sure. were running last okay, year. But now, but now Geno Smith's got a new system. The offensive line's got a new system. Got a new offensive coordinator. Got a new coach. And still, JSN is behind two veterans who are most likely going to pick up this new, especially Tyler Lockett. 
You would yeah, think but if you, if you just mentally, look, if you just look at what the back half of the season was for for know, JSN, just, me, it was I, I it was it. awesome. But that's a different, yeah, I'm sure. And they're good. That's what you want. You want to see that end of the season trajectory up for a rookie wide receiver. The if I'm saying by week three, you could probably get JSN a little bit cheaper. I just don't see them store. If and if and if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But I just feel like JSN could be a little bit slow out of the gates with a new system as yeah. probably the third on the totem pole, most likely. Unless the new regime is like, hey, let's I, get this guy the ball. It's fine to play that game, like, but I just want to take the guy who I think is most talented and yeah. the best player on the That's on the fine. field. I think you know, I, and 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 it's it's probably there's certainly value in saying that, but I I think. Uh, you know, a lot of the times when we do say that, I do find that to be a little bit of a cop out of like, mm-hmm. ah, we could just trade. Like sometimes yeah, you ain't getting them from me, so yeah, you know. Uh, and there's certain players that you're just not going to get JSN from. Sure, so, but I know. can get JSN cheaper now than I could last year. Uh, I'm not sure. I think uh, he, I think he kind of held held. So I don't know. I don't have that. It, it is sure. Pe- people should have known that it wasn't going to go amazing. Because he went higher than the sixth year. round in the startup I'm saying, last year. I'm saying startup draft. I don't I don't know where he, he was, was going higher last than year. sixth round in the startup yeah, last year. Maybe so. I don't Probably. know. He, he's he's definitely a little cheaper this year than he was last year. Of course for he sure. is. Because people are so short sighted. Right? And I'm, and JSN sixty catches for six hundred yards. He didn't even have a bad season. He didn't even well, start the people, season. He just hurt. missed some big yeah, plays came too. Out with their broken hand, yeah. I'm and not he hating just on JSN. A, a several big plays. I'm just saying they just changed everything over there, and it could start slow. Yeah. So there's an opportunity to potentially buy him a little yeah. bit cheaper. Yeah. I'm not saying don't draft him if you don't. I mean, get, you, Xavier, he's already, I can almost guarantee you Xavier, Xavier Worthy starting slow. Yeah, me too. All right, so he is. I mean, so out of all those guys, is maybe Lad you could say could come out with a hot start and worthy could come out with a hot start too because we don't know about rashi rice which is a good segue any of these guys are you buying the dip with rashi rice with that's a great question i mean i think you should be as a good dynasty player you should be trying to buy right. the dip right. with rashi rice it, it's, this might be a little rich because i think in the adp we'll probably continue to see this go down right um, yeah, I'd like to have a little bit. I'd like to have like tomorrow's I'd be able to ADP. Trade back a little bit and right. then trade for pick up something else and then trade that pick for Rashi Rice, like two, three. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I mean, it. That ADP is definitely going down. To go full circle, like when you were talking, when we first started about the T Higgins part and versus this guy, Xavier Worthy versus T Higgins or whatever, you know, just this whole pocket of rookies. Like if the only problem, if we just started with T Higgins, so I kind of like went towards, I hung on to those rookies, I have no hmm. problem. If my thing is like I'm gonna take Xavier Worthy, I'm gonna take the shiny object of Xavier Worthy and add add what to him to go to the next tier. But yeah, you know? sure. I just I want to be you know. Hey, can I even get? Can I get? How how cheap can I get Tank Dell right now? How how far do I got to go up from there? You know, can I get into the? Can I get Nico Collins? You know, what do I got to do to? Can I do I add? Can I get if can I catch you sleeping on Jalen Waddle? Mm-hmm. You know my one. Can I get Xavier Worthy plus where, what gives me Jalen Waddle? You know, et cetera, et cetera. You know, one um, nine two nine. Right. So that I just I didn't really I didn't really expand as much. Well, as I should and have we there. usually we usually keep that out of this conversation a little bit of of the the of the combinations of packages of trades to go get things just because it's sure it's, it's a, a little easier to just have the one one versus one right. And I th- that is a hundred percent the way that I would go about that is because in saying the same way of that I was taking T Higgins, I'm a hundred percent trading. You know that's a great point, and we talk about it a lot. Is I'm a hundred percent trying to move up from Xavier Worthy to uh, the known asset. I mean, even if it's somebody like if I got a good team, like if I how, how much to move up to DJ Moore, how much to move up to Devonta Smith, Michael Pittman, you know, exactly all, all those guys in there, um, and and Tank Dell and Zay Flowers for me. Um, DK Metcalf might be somebody who I, you know, I don't, I don't know how committed I am to moving up to him. If I, if it was a lateral move, probably okay with that. Um, but you know, that's a, we don't have to discuss that, but yes, adding some picks or some, some other older veterans or, or, or other players to it, to go up, it's, you know, just not trying to, uh, have a million different versions of packages like the one for one. But so, yeah, but, but no, I, I, I agree. I think, I think that is always, a, always a good play to try to. Well, interestingly enough, I think this time, you know, three months ago at the end of the season, uh, if you told me I had a chance to maybe pay, package up in that pocket somewhere, one nine to 112, if I could take my one twelve and trade it away for Rishi, Rishi Rice, I would, we, everybody would have done that in a heartbeat. Right. Here we are. We got, obviously we got a suspension looming. We got other things that's coming out. And he's already 24. Crazy. And, yeah. and then, of course, in the today's world, so the person, 
the person in the accident says they don't want to press char- they don't 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 want the cops to press charges mm-hmm. so here we go we got a little situation going on uh, if i mean if i'm in that if i'm in rasheed rice's camp i'm trying to figure out somebody to slide some cash over here and scoop my way out the door too right. why wouldn't you if i had it i'd right. do it that's how it um, works why wouldn't you um so i mean i think i think trying to buy the dip on rasheed rice is the way to do it but i think the way you put so like you said uh, i want to do it with tomorrow's adp but i don't think you should wait too late because all of a sudden if there's like you know three to four game suspension max that ain't that yeah. bad it's dynasty yeah you take you know take some medicine that shit clears up you're back to fucking <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah. you'd be all right <laughs> yeah buy the dip yeah yeah i think i think it's by the dip i don't know that you need to do it with any of these guys right this minute though nah. so but but i i think you're 100 percent right that's a, you know that's how this works and there's there's enough people who are just like ah fuck rashi rice and mm-hmm. i'm like I, I, look i'm not playing morality police here he's not babysitting my kids well, he came out and crushed it last year so um, you all, you just want to catch that you don't want to catch that one one owner and I, I, you might say you got four dynasty leagues one one of them might the guy might just be trying to get out of Rasheed Rice before it goes and it gets any worse, mm-hmm. you know. Instead of just being like, "Hey, I'm gonna hang on and wait till it gets better if I want to trade him," somebody might be like, oh, "I don't want it." This, you know, obviously the accident happened and all of a sudden he hit a dude out of a you know punched a guy and this and that. It's like, oh man, this thing's tanking fast. Then they got worthy and they got Hollywood at blah blah blah. It's like, all right, well, you know you might be just get him so cheap so just maybe shoot a dm over i mean it's always especially if you haven't had your rookie draft yet let some of that the big names get out of the way get into that pocket that one nine to one twelve i don't know obviously you're probably not gonna have all four of those picks but wherever you are in there somewhere maybe start with using your two maybe if maybe you're kind of in either on the clock or getting close to being on the clock and you're just like hey man i'm, I'm gonna kick the tires on rasheed rice I, you know you want to take my my two six and my four three for rice and and the guy's like no way man but i do it for the 112 and now you're off and running i can't give you the 112 for rasheed rice my man's about to be suspended maybe even for the whole year you don't know yet right and then you get to get to talking yeah you know see what happens yeah might no, sliding get, them dms might yeah. slide in might get root might get rasheed rice plus for your 112 yeah all right, well, that'll wrap up the discussion on kind of these player values here. We're going to go talk about some running backs and some deeper, some second round. Hey, before we jump, can I yeah. say something about oh, Ryan sure. Thomas real sure. quick before we jump out of there? Um, I've got a solid wrap-up game, but I didn't want you to get going too fast and, and get too far down the hole there. So I, it look, it seems to me like I might have been throwing shade on Brian Thomas earlier. Hmm. And obviously I was, you know, I was talking up lads, here. talking up lads, uh, early targets, um i think that the racist DM, it's no secret how many <laughs> targets we think lads get early but i think between that yeah, and some xavier worthy love and some george Pickens love i just kept I, I you know i think brian thomas is below all those guys in adp for a reason but the jags you know they're christian kirk's not going to wow you at flash evan ingram's going to kill you on those crossers but he's not going to wow you at flash Gabe Davis will wow you would flash every once in a every while. Every fifth game. Every, you know, but and he's going to be out there blocking his butt off and everything and making the coaches happy. That's what he does. But, you know, Trevor's about to get paid. The Jags are already like, we're all, they don't have any, why would they not pay him? What are you talking about? Everybody who's talking any shit about, uh, about, Trevor being a bust like have y'all not been around the Jacksonville like this is the best fucking quarterback they've had since Mark fucking Brunel <laughs> like, <laughs> right, I'm like right. what are you talking about yeah stop so, it yeah so they are relevant they are relevant um and so you I think Trevor's uh, a hashtag warrior too first game ever missed right yeah the uh I think I think Brian Go Thomas I think Brian Thomas can and will show you some ridiculousness it's just there is the there is a decent little floor there hidden behind some flash. Sure. I think I think him and Trevor, all it takes, they're going to hook, hook up a couple times. It's going to be really, really pretty. And their wide receiver room really leaves a lot to be desired. Mm-hmm. Next year, the year, com- the year that we have coming up into right now, I think Christian Kirk, Evan Ingram, uh, Gabe Davis for what he's going to bring to the offense. ETN catches a ton of balls. They want to bring in Bigsby. Um, and I think Brian Thomas will have a, I think he'll have a role. I think he'll be on the, I think he'll end up being on the field plenty. Obviously you, th- you would imagine that arrow points up as a snap percentage, as the weeks count down yeah. through the season. And I think Brian Thomas is going to be just fine. I think I, in the rookie draft, when you quote unquote, get stuck at one twelve and you can't get value where you want to be, where yeah. you, in the direction you want to be or going heading in brian thomas is a great pick yeah he's and he's the one that's slipping uh, he is a slipping, lot and that's and i've taken him in all the mocks that we've been doing and and i'm happy to have him it's just, i just there's some 
uh, there's a couple people right there in front of them. I just think it's going to be, uh, we just, we just thirst for that immediate impact. Sure. We're so impatient. So I think that the, the other guys, and obviously I don't, it's not the Xavier worthy is not yeah. going to be immediate impact. If he goes off, either. people are going to be salivating because he's that build that you, right. you know, yeah, he's, he's huge and he's fast and, he's, and he's, he's amazing, but, and he's slipping, he's falling, he's slipping. He can't get up. Speaking hey, of slipping, slipping and falling, I mean, falling. JSN, you're just talking about being impatient. But you don't want JSN because he's going to be jammed up for a year. Doesn't not want JSN. There's, that's, just, don't take it out of context. Just, not not wanting JSN, but I'm taking George Pickens over JSN this year. Yeah. And George Pickens about to lead his team. And he's going to be a target hog. Yeah. Well, not to open the can of worms. You, don't you're open taking a lot it, of those rookie picks, too. Not George Pickens. That wasn't really – I don't think that was a conversation. Well, but we got just really – we I just want people to not freak out about a situation and how many people are in front of them and how long – they might have to wait a year. They do it with Penix. They do it with everybody, you know? Oh, sure. he's jammed up. Uh, the, the Ricky Pierce all because he's got Ayuk and Debo. It's like just – we're playing Dynasty, guys. Settle down. Dude, I enjoy seeing JSN on my, on my roster. Mm. You should enjoy seeing JSN your roster. Wow, I, I, he's a trade target for me. All, yeah. all. Off. I think he's let's about. Go. We just bought him on our team together. He's let's a great go. buy. Oh yeah. All right. Well, let's wrap this thing up. We're going to talk about some running backs on the next show, and then we're going to talk about that Pierce All Coleman legged AD area. So be sure to keep it locked and loaded. Like, subscribe, comment below. If you're on the podcast and you haven't clicked the five star review button, what are you doing? Uh, we got Patreon, five dollar holler. All these, all this data and information that we're bringing you, that's straight from uh, the Discord and the mocks and and the community that we're building over there. It's a lot of fun. It's growing. Uh, a lot of chatter, a lot of information. We're doing roster reviews over there. We got roster reviews on YouTube. We're going to be going live, um, you know. So keep it, keep it locked. Rookie keep draft it kit, rookie draft kit. Uh, a lot of good information yeah. on that bad boy. Uh, and you know, we got some got some big things in the yeah. works here. So it'll, it's it's going to be fun, and uh, we're not going anywhere. So we'll catch you next time. Peace.